Hey guys, my name is Kevin Carden. I am a photographer and digital artist and welcome to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a very easy composite using two different images. So I've got this picture right here of a tunnel going through the mountains with some bright lights inside of the tunnel. And then I've got this picture of a man on a horse and uh, this is taken during sunset. You can see the sun behind him. Now one thing I would always tell you if you're going to composite a person uh, into a background, it is very helpful to get the light as accurate as you can. So in this case, we have the bright light behind them. And in this picture of the tunnel, we have the bright light behind as well. So it should be a little easy uh, when we mix these two images together. Now, before the tutorial even started, I went ahead and cut out this person. And uh, so let me go ahead and get that going here. All right, so I've got him on his own layer. I've already cut him out. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate him. So now we have two of these layers. And uh, what I'm gonna do is let me go and figure out where he needs to go first. I'm gonna move both of these layers uh, somewhere right in here. I think he's gonna be on this road about in this vicinity, something like that. All right, once you're happy with where he's at, you wanna take the other copy that's below him and you want to make a shadow. And so how we're gonna do that is we're going to flip the picture of him. So now he is upside down and I'm actually gonna hold down the control key and grab one of these uh, points right here and kind of drag it off to the left, the left and the bottom. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a nice little shadow down here uh, with respect to this tunnel. This tunnel light is very low to the ground, so it's gonna cause very, very long shadows. So I'm just gonna keep dragging this shadow like that. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, since this is an actual picture, it looks a little bit weird. You can still see all the details in the shadow. Uh, but to fix that, we're just gonna change it to multiply. And since it's mostly a black picture, uh, the shadow is gonna be mostly black as well. So what I'm gonna do is I don't want it completely black. I still wanna be able to see those lines in the road a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and change that opacity down to about 70, 70 to 80 percent, somewhere in there. And now we have the shadow underneath the uh, the horse. But what I want to do with the shadow is I want to go to my blur tool over here and I want to blur the edges of the shadow the further away it is from the horse. So where the shadow is it right underneath the horse, uh, probably going to be pretty sharp. Uh, not going to have any blurry edges, but as you get further away and closer to the camera, you're going to have some diffusion going on, and we're going to want to um, blur these edges as much as we can. So something kind of like that, just to make the shadow look a little bit more realistic. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, you can see, if you zoom in, you can see that there's like a little rim light around this uh, this man here. And the reason that is, is because I cut him out of this background, which was a bright yellow sun uh, behind him. And so you can see on the edges of his body, there's this little uh, rim light because he's getting lit up on the backside. And so in our, our project here, we have him with this, um, this light going around his edges. And you can see it very noticeably because the background is nice and dark. And so it doesn't match the original background. So what I want to do is I want to go all the way back to the original background. I'm gonna grab one of these, these orange colors here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this blend mode to screen. And I'm just gonna paint some light behind him. And I'm gonna kind of treat it like this is the, uh, the glow of the, um, the tunnel is just kind of leaking out. And what that's doing is it's creating some bright light uh, behind him. And now when you zoom in, you don't see that, uh, that rim light on him anymore because the background is pretty much the same color. See, this is before I added that light. And then here's when I add the light. See how much better of a, a cutout it looks. Uh, just doing that. Uh, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to put too much of that light going everywhere, especially like up in the sky or anything like that. Uh, so you want to be uh, careful with how much you do. Uh, but something like that makes a big difference in the picture and uh, makes it look a little bit more believable. Now I'm going to go to the very top of everything and I'm going to do the same orange color and I'm going to paint it right over top of this uh, person and his horse. And what that's going to do is it's going to make him look like he's just kind of like in the light He's being overwhelmed by the light um, and uh, losing a lot of detail, a lot lower contrast doing this. Uh, and then change that blend mode to screen as well. 
And I think something like that looks pretty good. All right, one last thing I want to do is I want to grab one of these bright yellows right here and just kind of paint yellow right over top of the tunnel and change it to screen as well. And this is just the light leak uh, coming directly from the tunnel. Like it's uh, the camera is aiming its picture, its lens at um, the, uh, the tunnel and part of the light is leaking over onto the actual model here. So something like that, just a little touch uh, of little light leak there. Uh, but guys, that's pretty much it. That's all I've got for today. I know this one was very simple and very basic, uh, but this is how you're going to do composites. You're going to find two pictures where the light source is very similar. So we had the light source of the tunnel. We had the light source of the sun. Uh, we cut them out. We flipped the, uh, the model and made it uh, into a shadow by changing it to multiply and blurring it. And then you can just add some fog and some light behind the model to more replicate uh, the original scene that he was in. And I think that will make a significant difference in your picture. But guys, that's all I've got for today. I hope that you've enjoyed these tutorials and uh, I will see you again tomorrow morning for a brand new Photoshop tutorial in this series. Thanks guys, have a good one.